Okay, so in this case, once we have that going, we want to be able to invoke some kind of a method on the countdown component, right? In this case, I think this is the perfect time to actually refactor this component. So I'm just going to save the date picker for now. And like I said, because we allow the user to type a custom date, we would need to refactor the application to account for that. For now, we're just calculating the difference between now as well as the new year, meaning the date in the future, basically January 1st, in this case 2019, right? You basically add one to the current year and then you calculate the difference. We want to be able to provide a custom date and because of that, we need to change some of the code here. One thing I'll do is instead of having duration in this date, let's actually do the following. We'll have a current date on this date. And by default, this is going to be the value of now. When you call moment like that without any parameters, it's basically going to default to the date and time of now, the current time and date, okay? This is going to be the current date. We're also going to have next date. Now, next date by default, because when the application mounts or when the application is created, we want to have a default value for that next date. The default value, like you see here, is going to be a new year. So I'm just gonna copy over that object, okay? And we don't have any now variables, so I'm just gonna create a new moment instance. Again, it's going to be the date of now, we're going to fetch the year, add one to it, and we're still going to have the pause property, okay? Next, whenever we update the state, instead of updating the duration, so for example here in the resume function, we actually want to update the value of current date, okay? And this is how the component is going to be updated on every second. So we'll set date to the new value of moment, okay? This is going to return the present date on every tick, on every second that the function or the, that the interval uh, reinvokes itself. Okay, so let's save that. And let's see, what else needs to change? So back in the constructor here, we used to have duration on the state. We're now going to have duration as a separate uh, variable. Let's have duration equals, we're gonna call this, get remaining time. And we need to refactor the method also. So for now, Let's do, we're gonna have the structure here again. We're gonna have current date. We're also gonna have next date, okay? We're gonna get them from the state. And we're also going to calculate the difference between the two. And this is going to be the difference between next date as well as current date, okay? And by default, current date would be basically now, the value of now. And we can kill the old code. And I think this should still work. Let's look for set state calls here. We have quite a few of them. We have one that sets the current date. We have one that sets the pause, and that's the only one uh, besides the other one that we have here. So I'm going to leave it off like that. Let's go back to the app. And the timer is still functional, but the difference is that now it's actually going to rely on two dates, and on every single render, it's going to recalculate the duration. Now the way this works is basically every single second we're going to update the value of the current date property on the state. And this is going to be the current date at that moment when the function re-executes because of the interval, okay? Next, for the date picker, let's also provide a new attribute here. So we're going to have an event and basically whenever a new date is submitted, so on date submit or let's do maybe on date reset, Whenever that event is triggered, we want to call a local method that we're going to create. Let's call that method handle date reset. This is basically going to reset the timer and the countdown timer, but we need to add that function also. And I also foresee that we're going to need to use ES7 class property syntax because of the reference to this keyword, okay? This function is also going to receive the new date, but for now let's just do console log. We are here just to make sure that this actually works. And this property will be passed to the date picker. We are going to be able to have access to it through the properties. So what I'm going to do here is we have handle date submit. This is going to fire whenever you click the button, the form gets submitted. So we're just going to call this props and that method on date reset. And we are going to pass this date to it, okay? So let's save that for now. We, we did quite a few changes. 
So let's see, I enter the date of tomorrow, 21st. I do reset, and we get we are here. Next, let's actually accept that argument. So we're going to have a new date. Okay, This is going to be the value of next date, actually. This is going to be the next date. Then we're going to update on the state. Right? This is going to update the property in the state. But for now, let's just console log that value. Next date. Okay. Let's say 2018, 09, 15. That's my birthday. And uh, let's see, undefined. Ah, we forgot to add the state. Of course, it's not this state, it's this state date. The date on the state, okay? Let's try again, 18, 09, 15. Enter, we get the date. Now, this date that you see right there is actually not an object. If I were to set that value to the state on the next date, it's going to be a string, and the calculation of the remaining time is going to fail because it actually expects an object that is basically compatible with moments because we need to call the difference on it. So it needs to be an object of the type uh, date, or actually the native uh, object that the moment library provides, okay? So we need to convert that to a moment. We need to wrap it in the moment. One way to do it, of course, is we could do it inside of here. So you could call moment on that string, and it's going to convert it to a moment instance. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do that inside of the date picker so that the countdown component actually receives the problem the proper value already so it doesn't have to do that conversion by itself let's import moment from moment and next here so we have a state let's uh let's call moment on it okay again when you wrap that string of date because it's just simply a string by default it's an empty string when you type to it it's still a string it looks like a date it's actually a string not an object but we, when we call moment on it it's actually going to wrap it and create an instance of the moment object okay and when we actually console log that value it's gonna make a lot more sense so let's do that let's save it again let's type something out 12 we get an instance of moment class or moment uh, moment object that the moment library provides so once we get that instance we're gonna be able to actually update the state so I'm going to call set state, and I'm going to pass next date. Now, because of the ES6 shorthand property syntax, before you would do something like this, you would have next date, call and next date, but we don't need to do that with ES6 anymore. The shorthand syntax would look something like next date, just the value of next date by itself. And the last thing is I'll remove the parentheses here because they're optional whenever you have a single argument. So we could also kill them. And the same thing goes here. So we have the event object. We could just kill the parentheses just for brevity. And if you go back to the browser, if I type something, let's do 0915, I click Submit. And as you can see here, it already updates the value of the timer. So we're now calculating a completely different value in there. If I were to do, let's say, 1215 AM, if I click Reset, as you can see, it's going to update the minutes also. If I were to do, let's say, PM, it's going to update the hours, you see? Now we get a warning here, we can just ignore it for now. But as you can see, it's basically relying on the default um, conversion mechanism that's built into Moment. So again, just to reiterate, what we're doing here is we are typing something to an input, right? Let's actually format this just a little bit so that it's more visible, and clearer to read, okay? So we have an input here, and we also have a button, and this is inside of a form. Whenever you type to an input, it's going to update the state with the value that you type. So it's going to store that value inside of the date, probably on the state. Whenever you click on the button, right, it's going to submit the form by itself. This is just how forms work in HTML. If you don't have the type attribute on the button, the default would be the submit type. Whenever you click on that button, it's going to submit the form. Now, whenever we submit the form, we also intercept that event. We have an onSubmit handler here, and we call a method that basically prevents the default. It's going to prevent the page refresh, and it's going to call onDateReset from the parent object, from the parent uh, component, excuse me. And we're going to pass a, an object, a moment object. We basically wrap the date string with the moment object. We pass that object to the parent. 
the parent is going to receive that object and it's going to update the state. Once the setState method executes, it updates the next state property on the state. The state changes, the component also re-renders, and when the component re-renders, it's going to update the duration. The calculation would be updated. We're going to calculate the difference between now as well as the next date. By default, it's new year, but if you provide something custom, it's going to be that date. Calculate the difference, calculate duration. You get the duration object and then you pass it to the timer. And the timer basically updates everything in the DOM as well. Okay.